Hi everyone. It is still January 30, 2019. This just happened in Columbia, South Carolina. Locking us in. It looks like we are being blocked in. That's security. Security's coming over here to talk to us. But if you can step out your vehicle for me, please. Thank you. Why do I need to step out? Because you're being charged for trespassing after you've asked, you've been asked to leave off the premises multiple we were walking, we were driving out. Our crew's being charged with trespassing right now. So could you please step out your vehicle? Can I Public housing. We were in the process of leaving. Please step out your vehicle. Okay. As you can see right now, Jenna and Susan are both in handcuffs. He just told me that I'm not allowed to record. I, If I step over this line right here, that I will also be detained. They are not happy that I am recording this right now. They just now took the handcuffs cuffs off of Jenna. We certainly don't want to see a reporter um, arrested or, you know, in anything while they're doing their job. Well, what's going on in Columbia, South Carolina? They were just doing their job. Reporting on what? Oh, conditions of Allen Benedict Court Apartments um, made a clear and imminent threat to residents. What happened? After two people were found dead, and this I believe happened on the 17th of January, more than 400 residents were asked to leave the Allen Benedict Court Apartments earlier this month after a gas leak was discovered. That was from the Columbia Fire Chief uh, Jenkins who sent a letter to the Columbia Housing Authority stating that the fire code and property maintenance were all issues in their investigation of the property. Okay, two people were found dead and there was no, the coroner never released the report of how they died but in mainstream media articles, all you hear is that they died from carbon monoxide. How did they know that if the coroner never released the reason or the cause of death? Um, during their inspection, 10 fire code violations and risks were noted. A presence of natural gas, they said, was unsafe and a severe risk for the community and the occupants, outdated, missing, or inactive smoke alarms, exposed wires from the ceiling where smoke alarms should have been, and there was a strong odor of petroleum and other pungent odor. Nine property maintenance violations and risks, including several stoves, leaking gas, and outdated stoves. Okay, so 63 apartments with carbon monoxide or natural gas was detected. 411 individuals evacuated, 17 pets evacuated. Due to the severity of the noted deficiencies, it has been determined that all buildings in this location are unsafe all of the buildings. Wow. Uh, the conditions as outlined at Allen Benedict Court constitute a clear and imminent threat to human life, safety, or health in accordance with the International Fire Code, International United Nations, the Fire Code, and the Property Maintenance Codes. And Columbia City Councilman Mo Badura has called for the resignation of Columbia Housing Authority officials saying the events unfolding at the apartment complex were avoidable. Okay, so two people found dead in apartments on January 17. The Richland County Coroner's Office has not confirmed if their deaths are related to the natural gas leak that was discovered. So why do you read so often that 
they died of carbon monoxide. It led to the displacement of 211 families. Well, what does this mean? Where are they? Well, some were put into hotels, but they were forced to leave the hotel early. Where are they now? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Some tenants said that they were given $45 gift cards in addition to being put in a hotel for several days. However, for most, what comes next remains to be seen. The Housing Authority did not respond to multiple requests for comment regarding the displacement of the residents and step steps it will be moving forward to secure housing for those affected. It's cold. These people are now homeless. Was there really all of those violations? And if, if that was the case, why didn't Columbia Housing Authority do anything? Because there's an awful lot of work orders that they never responded to. Hmm. City council members appoint the board members of the Columbia Housing Authority, but have no regulatory powers over the agency. They operate separately. Actually, the Housing Authority is overseen by our federal housing and urban development. Okay. Um, a look at the Columbia Housing Authority and the properties it owns. Columbia Housing Authority owns more than 20 housing properties with nearly 2,000 units throughout Columbia and Richland County. The Housing Authority has torn down properties in the past that they deem old. Gonzales Gardens, which was built in September of 1940, was demolished in 2017 and will soon be the site of new town homes and apartments. Huh. Interesting. Well, Allen Benedict Court was also built in 1940. The question now is, what's next for the 80-year-old complex? Could it be that this is a taking of the property? You know, for Agenda 2030 purposes. So the mayor of Columbia, Steve Benjamin, $30 million federal grant pending to redo Allen Benedict Court. And the mayor said he's going to be pushing to get the funding for this grant. It's nearly a week since 400 and 11 residents of the apartment complex were told to evacuate their homes following a gas leak. The apartments, it wasn't a big apartment building. They were, um, they were, let me get a picture of them. Here's one picture of them. So they were separate buildings that had several apartments in each building. 411 individuals, 211 families. The entire complex has been evacuated. Are you telling me that every building had gas leaks and other violations where these people could not stay in their homes. They've been evacuated. They've been asked to leave hotels. And we don't know what's happened to them. Something is amiss here with this story. So this 30 million that Steve Benjamin may be getting 
he, the Columbia, uh, the mayor of Columbia, um, he states, or this article states, there is still no word yet on when and if these residents will be able to return back to their homes. It's old property. It's well beyond its useful life. That's according to the mayor, Steve Benjamin. Well beyond its useful life. So kick these people out during the winter and you state that the housing, the Columbia Housing Authority is going to be helping, but we can't get any definitive um, details on how they are going to be helped. Well, I'm finding that when you have the housing authority, demolishing homes because they're old. Oh, it just doesn't sound quite right. The grant that the mayor of Columbia, Steve Benjamin, is looking for is a grant from HUD, Sustainable Communities Initiative. And yeah, HUD is also, yeah, your uh, what's his name? Secretary Ben Carson. Trump appoints Ben Carson to be the head of the Housing and Urban Development Agency that is implementing Agenda 2030 for the United Nations. Trump, Ben Carson, all our federal agencies are involved in implementing Agenda 2030, and it continues to roll along very smoothly all over our country, but we're focusing on Colombia. So yes, wow, the community challenge efforts included amending or replacing local master plans and updating zoning and building codes to reduce the barriers to development and promote mixed use development, affordable housing, walkable communities, transit-oriented development, and similar activities. Together, these two grant programs were known as the Sustainable Communities Initiative. So, um, when you see that, well, let's take a look at New York City. de Blasio, the mayor, Pitch's plan to seize private property of, pro, of uh, problem landlords. And this was, hey, landlords, if you're not keeping up with your properties and making sure that they're livable for your tenants, the city's going to take them. This is yet another way to move people around and get those smart cities, the sustainable cities, up and running. Do you think that housing authorities wouldn't lie about certain properties to get the people out? Of course they would. Of course they would. Especially when they're all working to redesign the cities. And you know what? I can't say definitively, but I think that that is what has happened here. Um, Steve Benjamin, wow, keynote, future of cities with, he's the keynote speaker with Jeffrey Sachs. And I, I had a comment from a subscriber who listened to his uh, State of the State address or State of the City address that was just a couple of days ago, I think. And I'm going to read some of it. It was all about, well, the first half was about Steve Benjamin. Then the second half was 
about Agenda 2030, the redesigning of Columbia. But here, Steve Benjamin, Mayor, City of Columbia, South Carolina, is the Vice President of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And he gives a keynote address with Jeffrey Sachs, Director of Sustainable Development Solutions Network, co-author of U.S. Cities Sustainable Development Goals Index. He's a professor at Columbia University, and he is also, uh, well, he's like a liaison to the head of the United Nations on Agenda 2030. That is what Steve Benjamin is doing to Columbia, South Carolina. He outlines his plans for the city of Columbia in 2019. Oh, and it's, yes, look at me and how great I am. These unbelievable narcissists that so many people love. Oh my God, Steve Benjamin, you are just fabulous. Yeah, I know, aren't I? All right, well, it's me, 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 to then all of the Agenda 2030, United Nations dictates, Steve Benjamin follows. I am God-made man. I am a God-made man, is what he said during this address. But I will follow Satan as long as I can benefit. Yes, our mandate is to build a compassionate city. There is no room, no space for bigotry, racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, homophobia, or any other offensive behavior. Throw that into your state of city address. Of course, you've got to bring up all of the liberal crap. You see, the essence of every state of the city address is for us to discuss where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. We're going to do that this evening to make your city better. Look at how much this guy talk, 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 talk. And you know what? It was all about him, 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 him. Okay, so uh, he said, we are not that Greenville. We are not the holy city. We aren't Charlotte's got a lot. We are Columbia. We are Columbia strong. We are the real southern hotspot. And I'm sure a lot of Colombians were going, yay, yeah, we are. We're great. We're great. And they no doubt love all of the changes that have already occurred to Columbia, South Carolina. And they're going to love all of the changes that he was talking about. And it's all about Agenda 2030 Smart Cities, where they will be so imprisoned. We saw why Columbia was named number two city where millennials are moving by smart asset. Um the first city in the nation to issue a green bond for standalone storm water upgrades certified by the Climate Bond Initiative. All, all a lie. Everything is a foundation of lies. And Steve Benjamin is right there to promote all of the lies and get the job done. Our first ever green bond of 37.9 million is a major step in our bold effort to stop flooding in the top 20 flooding areas across the city. We are not only funding stormwater improvements, but also making an investment in sustainability. If you're wondering how that affects the city's credit, we receive high grade ratings of A, big A, little A, two by Moody's and a double A plus by S&P. Yes, if you adhere and implement the United Nations Agenda 2030, you're going to get those ratings.
Well, how much we've planned to invest in replacing every residential water meter in the system with a new digital meter. So the water meters in South Carolina are going smart meter. So not only will you have a smart meter for your electricity, you will have a smart meter for your water, and boy, are you just going to be so happy when all of those pulsating frequencies come right into your home. Pulsating frequencies, which are really dangerous and are known to have myriad symptoms associated with them. Um, these meters will provide real-time water usage data and will improve accuracy, efficiency, and conservation, ensuring water customers have the most precise readings for their water usage. Oh, and if you, when you finally get that you can only use so much water, should you dare to try to use an additional gallon, you will have your water stopped, you will be fined, Perhaps you won't even get your water turned on again until you pay your fine. The real-time water usage. You think it's good for you? Uh-uh-uh. It's good for your controllers. The new meter system will also be able to assist customers with budgeting and leak information. Rehabilitating and replacing infrastructure. Um, going with the beneficial, beneficial reuse of biosolids, um, which biosolids, beneficial use of sewage, human waste, to be used as fertilizer. It's loaded with toxins, heavy metals, and that's what they are using as fertilizer now. And they call it organic fertilizer. Our sustainability efforts in the city continue as Columbia is one of more than 100 cities pledged to be 100% clean energy by 2036. This guy is going with those Paris uh, climate change initiatives, United Nations initiative, nothing to do with you guys in Columbia nothing to do with the United States, nothing to do with, with making life better for you. Green modes of transportation in launching the bike share project in partnership with Blue Cross Blue Shield, the blue bike. You'll have the option of ditching your car until you're mandated to ditch it because you won't, well, the redesign of your city, the mixed use, you know, housing and, and commercial space. You will have everything within walkable distance or bike dis distance. Eventually, you won't be able to have a car. That's part of the Agenda 2030 sustainable goals. It's not sustainable for you to drive a car. He also has a child savings account program where the city is putting in the initial deposit of $50 from the city um, to K through five students. Give people free things and they love you. Public private partnerships that make programs like these possible. Oh my God. Yes, and Comet, which is the transportation system in uh, public transportation in Columbia. They will introduce the nation's first ever partnership between a local transit station and ride share apps like Uber, Uber, sorry, and Lyft. Oh boy revitalizing Findlay Park to uh, be an exciting public-private partnership park. Opportunity zones, housing for everyone that can, um, that everyone can afford. They're working with partners like Habit for Humanity, 
which is also associated with the United Nations. So here he goes on to talk about the tragic deaths of uh, Mr. Witherspoon and Mr. Caldwell Roper in the Allen Benedict Court Apartments. And he talks about how it only underscores the urgency and creativity with which we should be working together to pursue more public sector and private sector affordable housing in our city. Our city planners are gathering input from the community. Yes, they want to hear from you. What do you want? And if people would only do the research, they would get that they're being so manipulated. The plans have already been made, some of them implemented, but then they get you together in these town halls, and they sit you down at tables, and they listen to you. What do you want when it's already been worked out? So, your mayor, Benjamin, is... No, this is not about God, and it's not about how great he is. It's about how shady he is in manipulating all of you into having your city redesigned so that it's easier for, yes, the powers that be, to control you when you don't have a car and you're in tight spaces and that smart city sensors all over the place where they will be able to watch you and listen to you 24-7 even in your tiny little apartments. And boy, democracy, democracy, democracy. Does any politician ever mention that our con country was actually uh, supposed to be this constitutional republic, not a democracy? But he's starting a commission on compassion and inclusion. 25 members on this commission. Yes, because, well, he wants to build that compassionate city. Feel compassion. Feel sympathy. It's compassion. Compassion to save the great democracy. Compassionate cities. Wear compassion. Speak compassion. Infuse it into every conversation. Allow compassion. The power of compassion in action. Compassion, 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 compassion. Compassion, compassion in action. Here you will be free. No. Here you will be more enslaved. All you have to do is do some research on Agenda 2030, Smart Cities, the Internet of Things, 5G that will make sure that all those sensors are speaking to other sensors, 5G, millimeter wave, incredibly dangerous to your health. It's scary to see how unbelievably fast all of this is taking place. So what is this? This is smart cities aren't sexy, but we need them. We need them. Yes. Um, and here, Ignite. Ignite it is, is a global consulting practice giving the smart city movement a bit of structure by working with multiple cities to focus their efforts on practical, easy to install technology. What is one of those cities? Columbia, South Carolina. Ignite. Ignite cities set sights on Louisiana. If you do a little bit of research, you'll find Ignite with the United Nations. Designing and building the digital sustainable cities. Yeah. California has a very loud voice because they have a lot of activists out there trying to get the word out, trying to fight all of what is taking place in California. 
I don't know any other state with so many activists. Here, South Carolina, crickets, crickets as Agenda 2030 gets implemented in Anderson, South Carolina, where I live. The mayor, mayor has signed on to the Paris Accord for climate change. Um, Ignite. You might want to check out some of these videos. Smart cities. Smart cities New York. Internet of Things systems to be used for smart cities. What is a smart city? And the um, CEO or founder of Ignite here, he's giving a talk on smart cities. Ignite by connecting devices, people, and services. We start to respond to city issues and allow the expansion of a new connected experience across city services, departments, and infrastructure. Yes, to enhance quality of life for citizens, for sustainable urbanization, transformation of human engagement. Oh, yes, you'll have those parks that are walkable to your from your home, um, human engagement, you'll be able to actually engage in humans, however crazy they are. Um, you won't be driving anymore. And because robots are taking over, well, in a relatively short amount of time, 80% of jobs will be gone because robots will be doing them. So you'll have an awful lot of time to talk to one another and you'll have your universal basic income that you can, huh, well, hope to survive on. Um, smart building trends, predictions for what's to come. This is a great site. It's going to tell you all the things to come. Smart, 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 smart. There are so many organizations working with the United Nations to bring in our infrastructure that will enslave humanity. So I will link below to all of this. Um, I Look, I'm just showing you what is taking place. Now, do I know for sure that they wanted the Allen Benedict court apartments. They want to demolish them so that, you know, Steve Benjamin and Jeffrey Sachs and Ignite and HUD can put up sustainable communities in the city of Columbia. Is it so out there considering how unbelievably corrupt are so many people in this country? But something's up. And yes, it's very disturbing to not know. Are these people now out on the street? It's very cold. What has happened to them? And if any of you know, it, it, you guys in South Carolina, please leave a comment below if you have gotten to an article that says, you know, what's happening to them, but $45 gift card? Wow! Yeah. It... When you are forced to leave your home immediately, the expenses that you incur are way more than if you were just living your regular life in your home. And based on this being, I think, a public housing development, well, you could, you could be pretty um, confident in saying these are not people with a lot of money. It's scary to see what's happening in this country. But the, the agendas are ramping up. Do not wait for Trump to do anything because he is part of it. All of our federal agencies are working for the United Nations 
to implement Agenda 2030. And when you have mayors claiming that they're going to be taking property from landlords, if those landlords have not provided them with livable um, accommodations, livable you know, homes and apartments, you know, because the court system doesn't work anymore, because the fines don't work anymore, now we're going to have mayors just taking them? I bet we're going to see more and more people getting evacuated for reasons that they'll make up. This is what we live. All links are below.